How many of you have ever felt trapped in the suffocating grasp of a narcissist? Perhaps it was a family member, a partner, a friend, or a colleague. You know the type. They're charming, charismatic, and so incredibly sure of themselves. And yet, they have an uncanny ability to make you feel small. To question your worth, your sanity, your very reality. And no matter how hard you try to reason with them, to make them see your perspective, it's always the same. You're the problem, never them. But what if I told you there's a way to not only survive these interactions, but to thrive in the face of them? Today, I want to introduce you to the principles of Stoicism, an ancient Greek philosophy that can be your armor and shield against the toxic onslaught of narcissism. Stoicism teaches us that the power lies in changing how we respond to a narcissist rather than attempting to change them. Let's face it, trying to change a narcissist is like trying to push a boulder up a mountain. It's exhausting, it's frustrating, and it's ultimately futile because narcissists are masters at avoiding accountability. But what we do have control over is our reaction, our emotions, and how much mental space we give them. It's like being in a boxing ring. The narcissist will constantly throw punches, but it's up to us whether we let those punches land or if we dodge and weave, refusing to give them the satisfaction of landing a hit. You see, Stoicism teaches us the art of indifference. It encourages us to focus instead on the things that bring joy and peace, the things that fulfill us, that make us better versions of ourselves. It's about choosing which battles to fight and realizing that most battles with a narcissist aren't worth fighting. They don't deserve that power over you. Now, please don't misunderstand me. Embracing stoicism isn't about suppressing your feelings or pretending everything is fine. It's about acknowledging those feelings, understanding them, and then making rational decisions based on that understanding. It's about creating emotional and physical boundaries to protect your well-being. Take a moment to think about that. Imagine being able to stand in the face of a narcissist's manipulation and gaslighting, their constant attempts to belittle you, to control you, and to remain unmoved. Imagine being able to look them in the eye and say, figuratively if not literally, you don't get to decide how I feel. You don't get to control my joy, my peace, my self-worth. Admittedly, it's far from easy. The journey to achieve that level of emotional resilience requires time, patience, and a lot of self-reflection. It requires us to take a hard look at ourselves, at our vulnerabilities and insecurities, at our deepest fears, because that's what narcissists prey on. They're like sharks, able to smell a drop of blood from miles away. And once they sense that vulnerability, they latch onto it, using it to control and manipulate us. But here's the kicker. When we acknowledge those vulnerabilities, when we face them head on and accept them as part of who we are, they lose their power over us. When we're no longer afraid of what the narcissist might think or say, when we're no longer dependent on their approval or validation, we've won half the battle. And therein lies the beauty of stoicism. It teaches us that happiness, peace, self-worth, these aren't things that can be given or taken away by someone else. They're within us, always have been, always will be. It's about realizing that we have the power to decide how we react, how we feel, and how we live our lives, regardless of the narcissists around us. And that, my friends, is the first step towards not just surviving but thriving amidst the narcissistic chaos. So, once you've started to cultivate this sense of stoic indifference, once you've begun to create those vital emotional and physical boundaries, you'll likely notice that the narcissist's behavior becomes even more pronounced. They may ramp up their charm offensive or their manipulation and gaslighting, all in an attempt to regain control. This is because narcissists often construct a facade of superiority to avoid facing their vulnerabilities, to shield themselves from the harsh light of introspection and accountability. This facade, this projection of an idealized self, is incredibly fragile. It's like a house of cards, beautiful to look at but easily toppled by the slightest gust of wind. And when you, as the victim of their narcissistic abuse, begin to reclaim your power, to establish your boundaries, you become that gust of wind. Now, it might be tempting to confront them directly, to call out their lies and manipulations. But remember, 
Narcissists are masters at avoiding accountability. They've honed their skills over many years, and they're quite adept at turning the tables, at making you the villain in their narrative. That's why, instead of confronting them directly, it can be more effective to subtly question their narratives. Let's say, for instance, that the narcissist in your life is always boasting about their achievements, often at the expense of others. Rather than challenging them outright, try asking probing questions. Show curiosity about the details of their accomplishments. More often than not, you'll find that their stories start to crumble under closer scrutiny. Their grandiose claims usually lack substance, and when pushed for more information, they often falter. But remember, approach the situation with caution. Mindfulness is key. Narcissists are unpredictable, and their reactions can be volatile. That's where the stoic principles of indifference come into play. By maintaining a level of emotional detachment, you can navigate these interactions without getting swept up in the ensuing drama. Another aspect to consider is perception. We often give the narcissist power by buying into their narrative, by believing in their constructed image of superiority. But by subtly challenging their idealized self, you can start to change your perception of them. And this is crucial because our perception of someone significantly influences how much power they have over us. If you perceive the narcissist as a powerful, influential figure, then you're more likely to feel intimidated and helpless. But if you start to see them for what they truly are, a deeply insecure individual hiding behind a facade, their power begins to wane. It's like realizing the wizard behind the curtain is just a regular person, not the all-powerful figure they purport to be. This process of changing perception isn't about belittling the narcissist or taking pleasure in their fall from grace. It's about reclaiming your power, about reducing their influence over your emotions and reactions. It's about shifting the balance, moving from a place of feeling dominated and controlled to a position of strength and resilience. And, once again, this aligns with the principles of Stoicism. Stoicism teaches us that we should strive to see things as they are, not as we imagine or wish them to be. It's about recognizing and accepting the reality of the situation, thereby enabling us to make rational decisions and act accordingly. So, while it may seem counterintuitive, challenging the narcissist's idealized self can actually lead to more peace and tranquility in your life. It can help you break free from their toxic influence and empower you to live your life on your terms. It's just another step on the journey towards personal growth and emotional resilience, a step that takes courage, patience, and perseverance. But remember, you're not alone. You're part of a community, a group of individuals all striving for the same goal, freedom from the oppressive clutches of narcissistic abuse. Having started to challenge the narcissist's idealized self and begun to change your perception of them, it's now time to focus on something just as essential, personal growth. It's about realizing that you have been through a significant amount of emotional stress and acknowledging that it's okay to seek guidance. Therapy is an excellent avenue for this. It's a space for you to explore your feelings and experiences without judgment. A place where you can start to heal from the wounds caused by toxic relationships. But more than that, it's about recognizing your inherent worth. Stoicism teaches us that virtue is the highest good, that it is the source of our happiness. And part of achieving virtue, in this case, is recognizing that you are worthy of respect, kindness, and love. It's about understanding that you have intrinsic value, and no amount of narcissistic abuse can diminish that. In therapy, you'll have the opportunity to delve into these feelings of worth. You'll be able to explore your experiences with the narcissist, to unpack the complex emotions that arise from such interactions. And in doing so, you'll begin to see patterns, to understand how the narcissist has manipulated these situations to their advantage. But therapy isn't just about dissecting the past. It's also about building a better future. It's about learning how to establish healthy relationships, how to set boundaries, and how to assert your needs. It's about discovering your strengths and learning how to leverage them. In many ways, therapy aligns with the Stoic principle of living according to nature. Stoics believe that we should live in accordance with our rational nature, that we should strive for self-awareness and self-improvement. 
And that's exactly what therapy offers. It's a space for introspection, for understanding ourselves on a deeper level. It's also a space to cultivate personal virtue. In Stoicism, virtues like wisdom, courage, justice, and temperance are held in high regard. Likewise, in therapy, you'll learn to embody these values. You'll learn to approach situations with wisdom, to face your fears with courage, to deal with others justly, and to manage your emotions with temperance. The journey towards personal growth isn't always easy. There will be moments of discomfort, moments when you'll have to confront painful truths. But remember, Stoicism teaches us that it's not the events themselves that disturb us, but our interpretation of these events. In therapy, you'll learn to reframe these narratives. You'll learn to view your experiences with the narcissist not as something that has broken you, but as something that has shaped you. As something that has made you stronger, more resilient, and more empathetic. The narrative you create about your experiences is powerful. It can either keep you trapped in a cycle of victimhood, or it can empower you to rise above your circumstances. And the choice, ultimately, is yours. Choosing to pursue therapy, to focus on personal growth, is an act of self-love. It's about acknowledging your worth and taking steps to nurture your mental and emotional well-being. It's about breaking free from the narcissist's control and reclaiming your independence. In doing so, you're embodying the stoic principles of self-awareness and personal virtue. You're choosing to live according to your rational nature, to strive for happiness and peace. And in the process, you're becoming a role model for others who are in similar situations. You're showing them that it's possible to rise above narcissistic abuse, to heal and grow. You're showing them that they, too, have inherent worth, that they, too, can reclaim their power and live a life of tranquility and resilience. Following your journey to personal growth and therapy, remember that Stoicism teaches us to control our thoughts, reactions, and emotions. This is one of the most powerful tools we have in dealing with a narcissist. By choosing, yes choosing, to control your reactions, you acknowledge your emotions and consciously decide how you will respond. When we are dealing with a narcissist, our emotions can often run high. We can feel angry, hurt, frustrated, and more. However, the stoic approach is not about suppressing these emotions, but about acknowledging them and at the same time, not giving them the power to dictate our actions. Imagine for a moment that the narcissist is trying to provoke you into an argument. They know your weaknesses, your triggers, and they will use them against you. But here is where the power of stoicism comes in. Instead of reacting impulsively, getting drawn into their emotional turmoil, you take a step back. You acknowledge your feelings, but decide not to let them control you. This stoic virtue of freedom from passion is about not being swayed by temporary emotions. It's about understanding that your emotions exist, but they do not define you, nor do they have to guide your actions. This refusal to engage in conflict with the narcissist can be incredibly empowering. You're showing the narcissist that their attempts to manipulate you are futile, that you are in control of your own mind and emotions. This is an incredibly powerful stance to take, and while it may not change the narcissist's behavior, it will certainly change your experience of it. Remember, the narcissist thrives on emotional chaos. They feed off your reactions, your hurt, your anger. But if you refuse to give them that, if you refuse to react in the way they want, you are effectively starving them of their source of power. Now, it's important to clarify that this doesn't mean you should let the narcissist get away with their abusive behavior. Being stoic doesn't mean being a doormat. You can still stand up for yourself, set boundaries, and assert your needs. But what it does mean is that you don't let their actions disturb your inner peace. Your mental space is sacred, and you have the power to protect it. You get to decide what influences it. And it's here we see the power of stoicism, allowing you to live with dignity, serenity, and strength no matter what the narcissist throws your way. You see, being stoic is about taking back control. It's about realizing that while you cannot control the narcissist's behavior, you can control how you respond to it. And this realization can be incredibly liberating. Understand this, it's not easy. 
Controlling your reactions, especially in the face of narcissistic abuse, requires a great amount of patience, resilience, and strength. But remember, stoicism is not about reaching a state of emotional invulnerability. It's about striving for inner peace and emotional resilience. It's about understanding your emotions, acknowledging them, and then making rational decisions about how to respond. It's about protecting your mental space, about refusing to let the narcissist's actions control your reactions. Being stoic is not about denying your emotions, but about managing them in a healthy way. It's about realizing that emotions are transient, that they come and go, but your peace of mind, your mental space, that's something you can protect and maintain. Stoicism offers us a powerful framework to deal with challenging personalities like narcissists. It's a way of life that empowers us to take control of our emotions, our reactions, and ultimately, our lives. And it's a journey, a continual process of learning, growing, and cultivating emotional resilience. And while this journey may be challenging at times, remember this, you are not alone. You are part of a community, a collective of individuals who are navigating this journey together. And together, we can support each other, learn from each other, and grow together. So, as you continue to explore the principles of Stoicism, remember to protect your mental space, control your reactions, and strive for dignity, serenity, and strength. In the journey of personal growth, Stoicism stands as a beacon guiding us towards a life of tranquility and resilience. It gives us the power to reclaim our lives from the clutches of difficult personalities such as narcissists. It teaches us to navigate the troubled waters of emotional manipulation and emerge stronger, wiser, and more in control. As we delve deeper into the principles of Stoicism, we find that it does not ask us to suppress our feelings or deny our vulnerabilities. Instead, it invites us to acknowledge our emotions, to understand them, and to make rational decisions despite them. Stoicism teaches us that our reactions to events and people around us, more than the events and people themselves, determine our peace of mind and emotional well-being. Whether you're dealing with a narcissist in your personal life or dealing with challenging personalities in your workplace, the principles of Stoicism can be a powerful tool in your arsenal. They empower you to control your reactions, to minimize the role these people play in your life, and to protect your mental space. Remember, the power lies in altering how we respond to a narcissist, not in changing them. We can't control their actions, but we can choose how much of our mental space we give them. Instead of focusing on their actions, Stoicism encourages us to focus on things that bring us joy and peace. Creating emotional and physical boundaries for our well-being becomes easier when we practice Stoicism. We become better equipped to challenge the narcissist's idealized self, to question their narratives without confronting them directly. And by doing so, we can reduce their power over our emotions and reactions. Never forget, your personal growth should always be your top priority. The goal is to heal from the wounds caused by toxic relationships and recognize your inherent worth. Therapy is a wonderful platform to explore your feelings and experiences without judgment. It aligns perfectly with the stoic principles of self-awareness, personal virtue, and living according to nature. In this journey, it's crucial to protect your mental space by controlling your reactions. Choosing to not engage in conflict with a narcissist is practicing the stoic virtue of freedom from passion. The power lies within you to protect your mental space control your reactions, and live with dignity, serenity, and strength. At this juncture, I would like to reiterate the importance of applying these principles of stoicism in coping with challenging personalities. Your courage to stand firm in the face of adversity and cultivate a life of tranquility and resilience is commendable. You are not alone in this journey. You are part of a community that supports each other. I encourage you to continue exploring Stoicism and psychology for personal growth and empowerment. The insights from these philosophical and psychological disciplines can be transformative, helping you lead a more fulfilled and resilient life. Thank you for investing your time with us today. Your journey towards personal growth is a testament to your strength and resolve. If you found value in this talk and wish to continue this voyage of self-discovery, 
feel free to subscribe to our channel and hit the like button. Sharing this video can also help others who are navigating similar journeys. Remember, in the journey to conquer the external world, do not lose sight of the inner world. For it is in mastering our inner selves that we find true peace, resilience, and growth. Until next time, stay strong, stay resilient, and stay on the path of personal growth.